Welcome back here to Team Friday here on OCRFM and also streaming live on MaxBlakeMedia.com. Big game tomorrow for the Colac Tigers. We take on St Albans. There's a massive clash for both sides as they still try and keep their slim finals chances alive. Both had pretty big wins last week. And on the line now, he was an ex-St Kilda star and now he's doing some great things at St Albans Football Club. A lot of Saints fans are looking forward to this interview. Raf Clark, thanks for joining us here on Team Friday, mate. No worries, mate. Thanks for having me. It must be a pretty exciting time at St Albans, mate. They had a, you had a, guys had a fantastic win last week against Lara, and uh, a couple of weeks ago you tested Grovedale out as well. So are uh, things just looking pretty good there at the Super Saints? Yeah, mate. Um, there's a bit of excitement around, uh, you know, not knowing what the club history was over the last three or four years. Um, and then, you know, we've all got the three wins, or we've only had three wins last year already. So, yep. you know... Everyone's a bit exciting, and it, it's good to see. I'd like to uh, just to know what drew you to St Albans, mate. It was a, you know, we normally get ex Geelong players, and maybe some ex, you know, Melbourne Carlton players that have got Geelong connections. What actually drew you to St Albans and come and play in the Geelong Football League? Uh, well, I was always um, going to be in Melbourne for the next couple of years, mate. Just yep. with, uh, with new work, um, doing a building apprenticeship at the moment. And oh, awesome! Just with all the footy clubs um, that I spoke to, I. I um, I needed to, to move into a full-time position with me apprenticeship in yep. St Albans. Um, I spoke to Cam Hall, who I, I knew since um, I played under 17s, and I AIS tour with him, and um, we sort of kept in touch, and he'd always said, oh, I'm playing down in St Albans next year if you're keen, if you're not, not longer playing AFL, well, yep. um, you know, we'd love to have you. So they were sort of pretty quick to get on the ball when it all happened, and you know, they, they teed up from a good company to work for as well. So um, that's how it sort of originated. And um, I sort of wanted to play at a, at a good standard still and, yep. and but not have the high pressure of a VFL or an NFL comp. So um, that was probably the, the big um, draw factor as well. Is there still anything in the belly there, Raf, that maybe might lure you to a, a VFL and maybe another chance in an AFL career, mate, or is it that sort of just gone and you want to focus on the next part of your life? Oh, uh, mate, it, yeah, I haven't really thought about it. Um, yep. The way it all happened and played out, I, I, I was sort of like, oh, yeah, I'm pretty stiff in a way. Like, I had yeah. three or four clubs that were pretty keen in the trade period and then it dried up pretty quickly. So the way it happened, I... I just said, well, it doesn't seem anyone sort of wants me in the system anymore, so I'm quite happy to move on with the next stage of my life. And, yep. you know, um, the building now is my, my number one priority and also playing footy on the weekends, um, having some fun with St Albans. What's harder, mate, building a house or playing uh, AFL football? Uh, well, mate, <laughs> you get something wrong on the job side, you can sort of fix it sort of straight yep. away and... Um, you know, it's only you and the next bloke next year that, that sees it. But when you're playing AFL footy, yeah. uh, everyone's an expert, mate, and everyone's got an opinion. And um, so that's probably harder because you know everyone's a keyboard hero as well, and everyone likes to have their little dig. So yeah, oh exactly. Um, that's definitely harder, mate. So. Yeah. <laughs> mate, just a, just a brief one on the AFL, mate. I always class anyone that's been drafted in the AFL system as a champion, mate. And, um, you know, yourself and, and Xavier, your brother, were at St Kilda. Well, what's Xavier up to these days? Yeah, Xavier um, uh, runs the Indigenous programs for the AFL. Yep. Um, he's a national coordinator, so I, anything that happens um, to do with the Indigenous side of... Um, Stuff with AFL, he he's the one who has to put it all together and run the show, um, run all the camps and that sort of stuff. So, oh, awesome! Like the All Star Camp up in Alice Springs, he he's in charge of that sort of stuff. And yep. All through um, Indigenous Round, he had fifty kids um, from all over Australia on a on a footy means business camp as well. So, um, yeah, he's quite busy, mate, and he he travels all over Australia. So he's got he's got a nice gig there in the office. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Yeah, pretty rough career too with injuries and all that so it was a shame we didn't see your brother at, uh, at his full peak because I reckon we would have seen some fantastic football mate just playing in Geelong mate does it bring back a bit of memory of the 2009 grand final I'm a mad Geelong fan um, you know I, I sort of love to stick it up to the St Kilda fans and all that but it's just a nice a nice little love-hate relationship you know but it, does anyone still give you a bit of flack of you know losing that grand final I know it would have been pretty tough at the time but it's been a few years on now but does it bring up some some memories of that game uh, being around in the Geelong area uh, no not really mate um, 
at uh, probably against South Bowen. It did. Yeah, um, I was Scarlet, yeah. obviously, yeah. but um, you know, uh, yeah, I think um, when you're on the footy field, there's a, a bit of respect too because um, yep. players actually, you know, you know, they respect that you played there in the AFL and that sort of stuff. They give you a bit of lip, but um, you know, nothing of you know in particular about grand finals or anything yep. like that. So. Um, you know, the one thing I've got that they sort of can't say anything is they they went down that day as yeah. well. So, um, but yeah, um, you know, it's um, it hasn't sort of come up too much. So, yeah, it's not a, it's not a memory that you know you love to think about though. <laughs> I guess in a way though, you did play in a couple of grand finals, mate. That would have been a, a pretty good thing to look back on in years to come, isn't it? Like, not many players, as a small percentage of players, do get to play in AFL grand finals, and you're lucky enough to play in a couple. Yeah, mate, um, uh, uh, you know, you hear about players playing their whole career and, and especially champions, you know, yep. who've played over 250 games and didn't get that opportunity. So to play in the 09 one was, you know, something that I'll, you know, cherish forever, but unfortunately it just went the wrong way. Yeah, and, uh, well, the Cats fans, it went the right way, Raph, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. mate, um, just on uh, also, uh, you had a great pre-season, mate, because you went up to Darwin and played for St Mary's. You played with our very own Kane Learson, won the premiership there. What was Kane like playing up there, mate, and how did you find it um, playing up in the Northern Territory League? Yeah, mate, it was good. Um, oh, I'm from from Darwin, yep. and you know that was that was my um home home club, and I um I was fortunate enough to get a flag before I left before I got drafted, and Xavier was up there playing because he never got that chance, and yep. um as soon as I got delisted, that was the first thing I wanted to do was get back and play some footy with him up home, and you know with all our mates. So, um you know it was a successful year. We won the won the grand final. Um, Boys only lost round one and yep. went through undefeated. Uh, you know the rest of the year undefeated. But you know, Clint Kane Leeson, um, like you mentioned, yeah. was up there, mate. He was a super player for us. Um, you know, ran all day, and you know he, he's a good size too. So uh, he played really well in, in our two final games as well, to his credit. So um, you know, he, he, I think he'll cherish that forever, and I, I'm pretty sure he'll be keen to come back next year and try and. Go back to back because I'm, I'm sure me and Xavier are going to be doing the same. So, do you do you reckon that's a good thing to it might draw because a, a few people now like down our way, uh, definitely my hometown Cobden. There's a couple of kids have gone up there and played in the Northern Territory League over the summer. It's a good little pre-season thing, isn't it? Like you go up there and you're actually playing a real solid competitive football, and you come back here and you're pretty much cherry ripe for another football season. It's it's a real good thing, and it might draw as I said a few more extra people from Victoria to come up and play and, you know, make the standard even more high than what it already is. Yeah, definitely. And, and um, Geelong has been well known for a lot of players yep. come up um, over the years. Uh, I, my footy club, St Mary's, where I'm from, you know, some of our legends um, are originally from Geelong. You know, there's a, the Perry brothers that, uh, from Lara originally and yep. um, a guy, Stewie Senior, who passed away not long ago, was from uh, Grovedale and, and, you know, all these sort of names. So it's always... Um, been a big draw card for blokes to be able to play all you know all, all year round, and um, yeah, it definitely helps with your footy because you you know you don't have those down periods, and then you have to get the motivation yeah. to train. So um, yeah, it definitely gets you ready a lot quicker because the match fitness sort of never really drops off. How did you go playing up in the heat? Have you sort of accommodated to you know a cold Victorian winter, and then you have to go up and play a you know a nice summer up there at the Northern Territory, or is it already just in your blood that you can play in that sort of uh, you know that heat? Oh, you think it's in your blood, mate? Yeah. But the first couple of weeks <laughs> it wasn't. Um, you know, I struggled pretty pretty much um, yeah. just with the heat. You know, your first quarters would you, you'd come out and you'd you know you'd be everywhere, yeah. and then after that it's, it's uh, it was downhill pretty quickly, but. You know, I, I only played about nine or ten games um, for the season up there, and you know, obviously, the more footy got played, the better it was. Yep. So, um, yeah, and uh, definitely, you know, helped me roll into this this season down here in the GFL as well. And then you're back down here playing in what was it on Saturday? Like twelve degrees, nice and cold, wet and windy. So <laughs> yeah, it's pretty freezing, mate. It's nice and rainy and that sort of stuff. And I, I think it's going to be like that um, tomorrow as well. So. Uh, uh, mate, but no, uh, how have you found the league in the in the Geelong League, mate? As I said, it's a pretty high uh, standard league, and it is number one now in the VCFL rankings. How have you found it? How have you found the fans? How have you found the opposition players uh, and all that sort of stuff, mate? 
Yeah, it's been good, mate. Um, you know, especially like the camaraderie after the games. Um, yep. You know, that's what that's what footy should be about. Um, everyone getting back to each other's club rooms and being able to stand around and have a chat about the game doesn't matter if you you know you just got a hiding or, or what. And um, you know, once you come off the footy field, you know, you should all be able to have a chat and have a beer together. And yep. um, that's what I love about the comp, mate. But yeah, like you said, the standard um, has been really good. Uh, you know, there's. Some games you you in it, and then all of a sudden they against you know big teams like South Farm, we we sort of pushed them, and then yep. I think they hit a switch, and you realise how good some <laughs> of these teams are. So, have you been a bit impressed about how professional it is down here? Were you sort of a bit surprised about that because I mean, a side like South Farm, and you know in the preseason they train like four or five nights a week and all that. They're almost you know equivalent to a VFL, almost up there with the AFL sort of standards of training and all that sort of stuff. Were you impressed by that? Like how sort of real up there any they are in their pre-season yeah, yeah, well, yeah definitely especially with our boys you know yeah. our boys train at almost three at least three nights a week and sometimes there's an extras done as well which makes it a four night training session a week so yeah um with me being in melbourne you know i'll have to do you know at least two sessions by myself and then i get down every thursday and train with the team so yep um, you know, it's not just um, turn up and have a kick sort of thing. So yep. it's, uh, it's, that's the good thing about it as well. Ah, oh, that's fantastic, mate. Have you found the Sterling's <coughs> Recreation Reserve? It's a pretty big ground, isn't it? Yeah, mate. It's a nice, nice spot there, and, and the ground holds up really well, especially yeah. with all the rain they had last week. Um, you know, you wouldn't have known that it was, um, had all the rain, and yeah. it actually rained pretty hard in the reserves games in the last quarter. And then when we when we came out to play, it was um, you know it was still really good nick in the centre of the centre square it wasn't all mud so yep. uh, it holds up really well How do you, do you like playing in the wet Raph do you, is that sort of a, the, the game that you like playing you know it's sort of like the old school football or do you like playing in the dry oh uh, mate it um, depends on your position I think <laughs> if you're playing down back you, you don't mind it a bit wetter because then uh, you know it's harder for your forwards to market yeah. But, um, yeah I don't mind it mate it's um uh, I, I prefer probably the dry just because of coming from down, but as well as that, we play in the wet season, so yeah, yeah. You know, if it rains, I'm, I'm quite used to playing in the rain from just from my junior days. Now, big game tomorrow, Raf. You're playing the uh, Colac Tigers, mate, and you used to be teammates with the one called Stevie Baker. I'm guessing he would have told you a few stories about what happens in Colac, mate. But uh, yeah. have you have you been to the the good town of Colac? Yeah, mate. Um, unfortunately, I've only been once, but. You know, and the reason for, I came for wasn't a great reason either. It was, it was for Stephen Baker's old man's funeral yep. last year, and yep. um, you know, just unfortunate uh, I didn't get to have a look around. So we had to get back to training the next morning. So, um, but yeah, I'm still waiting for Bakes. He keeps telling me he's, he's going to take me down there. And we'll, we'll go and have a bit of fun. But um, yeah, he's, he's a busy man these days, so got some, it's all understandable. Got some great places here: straight shooters, odd fellows, some great sponsors of our local footy as well, mate. But it's a big game. Colac Tigers, you guys are sitting. Well, you got your third win on the board, and just a couple of wins outside the top five, and just starting to gather a bit of momentum. And um, you know, Grovedale a couple of weeks ago, mate, you really pushed them, and then Lara on the weekend, who uh, have been a fantastic fantastic side so you, you as I said at the start of the interview you must be really starting to gather a bit of momentum and um, you must be like starting to also believe in yourselves as well yeah mate I think it's just um, it's good for the young kids down there who, who have been sort of starved of success and you know have never really been in in games before you know they, I think they've just quite gotten used to um, you know being beaten by big scores every week so yeah. um, like you said you know we came out and you know, push Grovedale right to the last minute. We should have won that one as well. And um, um, you know, with South Barn, we even we were in we we're in the top up to half time as well. And um, you know, that sort of just gives everyone that little bit of confidence that they're sort of you know they can see that we're going to end up coming good. And um, yeah. you know, they're building some momentum. And uh, I think the young boys, especially, you can see it in their eyes that they're just getting a bit of belief about the, their abilities too, and they can play against men. So. Yep. I think that's a, that's a key going forward for St Albans and all the young kids. Is you know the next couple of games, if we if we get another couple of good wins like we did on the weekend, it's, it does amazing things for the whole list. 
It's a big rivalry between uh, St Albans and Colac, mate. I think last year was a one-point ball game, and even when the Tigers were up there, the top St Albans always were a side that uh, used to rule push the Tigers, mate. So we're looking forward to tomorrow. Raf, thanks for joining us today on Team Friday. Please don't tower us up too much tomorrow, but uh, we're looking forward to seeing what you can produce tomorrow, mate, and for the rest of the year. It's great to have a player of your calibre in the GFL, mate, and for local footy, it's also great as well, mate. So thanks for joining us this afternoon. No worries, mate. Thanks for the chat. That was Raf Clark from the St Albans Football.